Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Let's read there. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly, help me, because there's an atmosphere change. It's dark, they're over there at night, and all of a sudden it's light. It's an atmosphere change. Uh, sudden changes in atmosphere always grab your attention. I mean, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Um, if you want to change behavior or an at- change the atmosphere, change the atmosphere, change your music. If you don't like something that's going on, paint. Paint the house. It'll change the atmosphere. Change the carpet. Uh, move something around. Move, 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 your, move this from this side to this side. Change, change the atmosphere. I'm just telling you, little small things that you do to change the atmosphere will change behavior. You have little kids and it's really cold outside. You just get a jacket on. I'm okay. Get a jacket on. I'm okay. Then it's freezing outside. Where's my jacket? <laughs> Why? Because the atmosphere's changed. Start changing the atmosphere. Stop fighting against behavior. Tough to change behavior. Change the atmosphere. Change your atmosphere. If, you get, if it's not working at work, change the atmosphere. If you're having conflict with a person in your household, change the atmosphere. This thing's not going to hurt. Stop it and change the atmosphere. A sudden change in atmospheres grab attention. And these guys who are shepherds at night now are blown away, afraid, because it's high noon now. And an angel says, relax, don't be afraid. Good things are happening. Verse 10 Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings, good news of great joy, which will be to all people. Please say all people. This is not reserved. God coming to to save a particular set of people is not God's way. God loves us all, and he wants all people. So we know we take that as Jews and Gentiles. That is true. It's absolutely true. Jews and Gentiles. That encompasses everybody. But I want, the, I want that to be more personal to you. The guy that you don't particularly like or care for, or the neighbor, or the co-worker that's really a rat fink, knucklehead. He came for them. He came to bring them good news that will produce great joy. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Jesus has the power to bring great joy into, into your life. Not, not, not like Thanksgiving, man, we had this wonderful meal. That was good. It, didn't, it brought, might brought joy and happiness and contentment and a lot of extra calories and weight. But <laughs> nonetheless, um, you got that, but it didn't have the, in it the ability to bring great joy that's sustainable. It's just a good meal. Thank God for it. But Jesus, when he steps into your life, he is the good news. And he can bring great joy, and it's for everyone. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, with the angel, a multitude, another suddenly, atmosphere change, a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Goodwill, peace towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, What was that? Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Um, I love the shepherds because they're out in the field and they are, these are very special shepherds. Um, they have a special anointing and gifting from God. You know, shepherds during the time who raised lambs and, and sheep had an important role in the community. Why? Because every family was responsible once a year to bring a lamb to be sacrificed on behalf of the family in the nation of Israel. Um, and the lamb had to be perfect. 
without spot or blemish. You can't have a blind one, a lame one, nothing. So these guys who are birthing these lambs had the responsibility to make sure that these lambs were perfect. Because if, if they all were messed up, they couldn't, the nation couldn't sacrifice to the living God, and therefore their relationship with God was going to be dysfunctional. So they had this huge responsibility, and they understood how to take care of lambs. So that lamb would be birthed, they would clean that lamb, they would wrap that lamb up to keep it warm because it's out in a field where it's cold, and they would protect it and watch over it and care for it. And so God gave them a symbol that was comfortable to them. Go to a manger where lambs are birthed, and you're going to find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, cl claws, closes. hello. Swaddling cloths, lying in that manger. And that one, that is the savior of the world. And he has the power when he comes into your life to bring great joy. And because he's on the planet, I'm releasing into the atmosphere peace and goodwill. Do you know, that's why this whole season is full of that joy and happiness and you know it's music and the music that people are playing on and you go any place or a restaurant or uh, Barnes and Nobles there's it was there with yes I was there with her and they're playing Christmas music and it's the same doggone songs it's not like it's new stuff it's the same songs every year the same songs and everybody's like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're singing the songs and smiling and happy and falling in what don't you have a new song? You don't need a new song. We love that song. <laughs> Why? Because the atmosphere. It just creates that festive and happy atmosphere. It's a season and Yeshua has given to the world. And it's special. And they came and made haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. You, sh you, sh you should highlight their response in verse 17. That's an important response. It's a response that's warranted for what they encounter. It's the same response we should have for what we have encountered. On, and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered Muse them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned and glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Tell the story to everyone. Tell the story. You gotta, I'm going to give you uh, what I think are seven components built on this encounter from the shepherds with Jesus. Here's the first, number one. You must develop and share your own good news story. You've got to have a good news story. A story that, that, that talks about your encounter with the living God. You ought to develop that story. And, and your story can't take an hour to tell. You know, you, it's got to be a short story. Um, David, Paul had a, a story. I always started with this. I was on the Damascus, I was on the road to Damascus. And I was persecuting the church. And God met me on that road, and here's what he said. It's hard for you to fight against me and prevail. And I, I came out of that, and I was blind. And I said, and he, and he tells a story. He tells about how he was a Pharisee of Pharisees and, and how he was really, but then God flipped him. And then he's going to preach the gospel through his story. You ought to have a story. My story is I was born in uh, South Central Los Angeles, and uh, my dad died before I was born, about, about two months. But and my, my mom couldn't get pregnant. Uh, so we adopted my older brother, my older sister, and then she got pregnant with me. And, and I tell my story about how I got encountered, my, how I met God. You ought to develop a story. You got to get your story. What's your story? What's your story on, that you should tell over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until you're so comfortable with that story that it's a natural story? You got to get a story. You got to start developing. And it's in a simple story about how you encountered God or your family, or where you grew up. And so we'll talk more about that at another time, but develop and share your good news story. So when you're at Starbucks, 
and it's cold outside, and you're, you're, somebody's in Starbucks, and they say to you, whoo, man, isn't it cold outside? Whoa, that's cold. That's your time for your story. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. Where you from? Chicago. Chicago? Maybe cold to you. You're from Chicago. Man, this is nothing compared to Chicago. How long you been in Seattle? See? It's time for you at some point in time to weave in let me tell you how I got here. And then you just tell them your story. Share your story. As you're telling the story, be friendly and positive. Be upbeat. You're going to find that the, that the angels never told the shepherds that they're going to hell if they don't find Jesus. <laughs> they left that out of there? I'm just saying, while you're at Starbucks, you probably should leave that piece out and share a positive, friendly, upbeat story. Because that's, here's what Yeshua said. He, for all, good, peace and goodwill. He comes to save everyone, to give them great joy to all people. So share the story and be friendly, be positive, be nice. Here's a third component. Uh, weave into your story at some point in time in the conversation that God loves you and is available to help you. God loves you and he's available to help you. You, you ought to communicate. If you don't communicate anything else to, the, to that person, you ought to communicate this. God loves you and he's for you and he's going to help you. I remember when I first, when I first got here, I don't I don't even think I was, I was actually here. I was here really to do a men's meeting. And I was staying at the, uh, the Marriott Courtyard on 320th and, was that, was that military? No, that's not military, 320th, right by the freeway. You know where the Marriott is. And uh, I, was, I was kind of pr trying to print the, the message I had prepared at the little business center downstairs, which is a little small room. And, and there was some the news was on and the, there were some fires in California and a guy was in the room with me. I wasn't by myself and, and I'm working on my stuff trying to get this done and focus, trying to focus and he's talking to me and, uh, and I wanted to say, dude, do you see I'm busy with something here? <laughs> but that wouldn't be friendly or positive. <laughs> so... Uh, the Lord says to me, he's not going to leave until you're engaging. And I realize that, God's, that God is involved in this. So I say to him, your concern with your, your, the house, your grandmother's house, it's your grandmother's house, where does, where does she live? And he kind of looks at me and he, he mentions where she lives, Santa Clarita or something like that, wherever the fires were. I said, don't worry about it, God. She's going to be fine. The uh, house is going to be all right. The fire is going to turn. And uh, I'm going to pray, and it's just it's going to be fine. She's going to be good. He looks at me and says, you can do that? <laughs> I said, yeah. And, I, and I've got some stuff to do, so we're going to take care of this right now. <laughs> and I'm just saying, as you encounter people, you tell them your story. And make sure that they understand that God loves them and he's, he's available. Here's, here's the fourth one. Four things I'm going to encourage you to do. And this is, ought to become a life habit. Is ask how you can help. How can I help you? What can I do to help you? Can I help you? You ought to say that all the time. Anytime you meet somebody new or in a relationship, you ought to say at some point in time in the conversation, how can I help you? What can I do to help you? Hey, can I help? How can I help you? You meet somebody who needs gas. How can I help? And then, and then do, do what you can to help them. Sometimes what you, the only thing you can do is pray, but sometimes you can be the difference. The, the angels didn't show up and tell the shepherds that Jesus is going to be born 1,500 years from now. They said, today. 
today, lying in a manger. Jesus, the, the Savior, is born today. Be the answer for somebody today. Be there today. Help them. What can I do to help you? Well, man, I don't want to help them. I'm going to have to go out of my way to do something. Yeah, that's called being a Christian. That's what Christians do. It's not, I'm, I'm not expecting the world to do that. I'm expecting me to do that. I was, um, my daughter inspired me yesterday. She was telling me about um, um, some people that came to her. I don't forgot where she was going to get some food, a little fast food place. That, and uh, they gave her a couple of dollars to, so they could, she said, could you get me a coffee? So what she does, she goes in and she gets them a couple of sandwiches and, and uh, some food and the coffee and, and french fries and everything else and comes out and just blesses them with it. So, uh, so she tells me that story yesterday and then while I'm going to uh, uh, pick up Joseph in South Center, um, I'm going into the Burger King and there's a woman out there and she's r covered up and she's wrapped and she's shaking because it's really cold. So I decide when I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy her some food. So I rolled my window down. And I said, can I, are you hungry? Would you like some food? Uh, something to drink? She, and so she says, are you getting something? And I said, I am. Uh, so she says, yeah. So I, I, I get the food for her and I come back and I give it to her and, and, and I bought her a coffee. And she says to me, I don't drink from no cups. I ain't drinking from no cup. I don't care about that cup you have. I am not drinking from that cup. Will you come in and give me a cup? I said, I am giving you a cup, ma'am, the Burger King cup. <laughs> Burger King is giving you this cup. It's just coffee. I don't drink coffee. That's all right if you don't want some coffee. So, so she's giving me the business, right? So after, and then she, she takes the food and she says, hey, but thank you for the food. <laughs> it's real nice. And so I got back in the car. As I'm getting back in the car, I knew that the enemy had wanted me to focus on the wrong thing. Are you, I'm there, them people, they don't care for, no, no, good. He, that's where he wants you to go. But I, I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to address it though. And I said, I don't care if she threw the food on the floor and stomped on it. I'm still going to help her. I'm still going to bless them. I'm still going to care because these are, these are my people. This is my family. How can I help you? What can I do to make a difference for you? Uh, number five, ask if you can pray for them. As you're sharing your story and having an encounter, pray for them. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? They're either going to give you an answer. They're going to say yes or no. If they say yes, grab and stick out your hand. Get a point of contact. Can, I, can you grab my hand? Will you take my hand? Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus. And if they say no, you're still going to pray, but you're not going to pray right and then. You're going to pray later. Can I pray for you? No, nah, man, I don't want you praying for me. Okay, we're good. So I get in the car, Father, you know who that is. <laughs> and the reason you had me encounter them today is to save their life. I don't know them, but you know. And I'm going to pray for them anyway. But I'm not going to pray with them. I'm going to pray for them. Find the appropriate method of prayer and use that. And and make your prayer personal. Don't, don't, don't take prayer number 803B. <laughs> oh God, you know the heavens and the earth. The stars that created all over the universe. And you who see the seeds of grass that grow. And the mighty Fountains of life, God, are with you. This dude just needs a burger, man. Come on. <laughs> Can you pray about a burger in there? <laughs> Come on, get personal. Get pers Get in somebody's world. If they got an issue with their heart, pray for their heart and make it personal. 
Father, I ask that you touch his heart. I know we can't live without, without a healthy heart. And irrespective of some of the things that have happened in the past, we know that you're a healer. I know that many times that you've healed me. Well, heal him. Heal his heart, God. Restore his body. I know that you love him. And I'm telling you, you're, you're, shaking, you're having, taking their hand. And there's a point of contact. And it becomes personal. You ought to get used to doing that. Get comfortable with that. How can I help you? Can I pray for you? What's going on? What's going on in your life? How long have you been out of work? Wow. Well, let's just believe God for a new job. Do you have any training? What have you done in the past? Come on. Make it personal. Get involved. It's amazing. God hears you. He may not respond to their prayer, but he's going to respond to your prayer. Jesus would always pray, and God would always respond to his prayer. Always. No matter how, no matter what. Blind eyes, deaf ears, people didn't have food. He said, yeah, let's feed them. How much, what do we got? A couple of loaves and a few fish. That's enough. That's not enough, Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's plenty. <laughs> yeah. Then he'd say, bring it, bring it here, break it up. Father, I know you are. Here. Let's bless this food and hand it out. And next thing you know, there's food for 5,000. He didn't have to go back to, well, you know, in Moses, during the day. He knew. He just walked with God. Same as you. Amen. You walk with God. Now, you might be trying to disqualify yourself by saying, well, I don't walk like Jesus. Well, but you can ch change that. You can change that. As you pray, you'll find Father's going to do extraordinary things. <laughs> and the first time, I'm laughing a little bit because it's going to mess you up the first time you pray for God to do something supernatural, and he does it. And you're going to go, whoa, it happened? That's awesome. That's awesome. It's going to fire you up. It's going to give you some real energy in the kingdom of God, some real passion to put your, your hand on somebody that has cancer and they're dying, and the cancer now is gone. That's going to be great for you. Um, and it's going to become a life habit. And here's the last one. Uh, thank God for opening the door. God will open the door for you to be a witness, his witness. Um, when you step into the kingdom of God, the, the scripture says there's an, a numberless multitude, an, an amount of people you can't even count. I, w I want part of that numberless multitude to be your multitude, to be people that you have impacted in your life, just like you are, that, that they found Yeshua just because they're talking to you. I'm not, I'm not saying they got to get saved that second, but they may remember, you know, that I, met this, I met this guy. I met this, he, he was out of Starbucks. Man, it was so weird. It was just, I just knew, some, I just knew something was happening. I'd been, man, my mother was sick in the hospital. I didn't know what to do about it. I stopped just to get a drink. I wasn't even going to stop there, and then I did. And this guy, he was standing behind me and bought my drink. And then he said, let that be your story. That you took their hand and prayed a simple prayer. And God healed his mother. And he got born again. And it changed his life. And he didn't get born again at the Starbucks. He got born again a couple years later. But he remembers. Then you're in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is saying to you, hey, give me some. That's awesome. You see all those guys? They all came in because of you. And you're like, I don't know any of them. I know. <laughs> but at the Starbucks. Come on. Let's start that way to become our way. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
we choose to be your witness and help us to share our good news story. If we don't have one, let us develop one and give us a spirit to be positive and friendly and upbeat and to remind your people what we already know, that you love us. And we are vessels to help, to pray, to encourage, to build up. This is a whole season, Lord, where that is the focal point of our lives. Let it not just be a season now, but a way of life forever. And when we pray, hear us and grant the petitions that we pray. Teach us how to pray prayers that are effective and holy and righteous and break the tricks and schemes of the demonic so that it is broken and break the limitations on our mind for you are the God of no limits, limitless. You can do anything at any time for all of us. So do it again. As we put ourselves in position, God, do it again. Do great and mighty things again in every aspect of our lives. And let this be a new season. Let it begin now in Jesus' name. If you haven't given your life to Yeshua as the Lord of your life, then just do that right now. Lift up your right hand. If you're in the house, lift up your hand and say, I haven't given my life to Yeshua and I want to do that. Just lift up your hand. I'm just going to pray a simple prayer. You're going to, but it's a powerful prayer. And you're going to give your life to the Lord. It's going to change. If you watch me online, do the same thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, for anyone here or online that have not given their life to you, just say, Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as the Lord of my life. And I say yes to you. To your love and to your way. And it is sealed and settled for me forever in Jesus' name. At the end of this service, um, if you're here physically, Roosevelt and Annette will meet you in, in the prayer room and we'll get some resources in your hand. If you're online watching or hearing this message, you can text I am saved to 41400. If you text that, we'll, we'll get you tons of resources. Into, into your hands for free and just want to bless you and strengthen you. Father, we just thank you that let this happen a thousand times over for every one of us. A numberless amount of times according to your own desire in Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Um, we, we are, this is, this is a, great, a great season we're in. Um, let's, let's rejoice in it, celebrate it, enjoy it. You know, some of it's commercialism and, and with presents and gifts and all that stuff, but that's all right. You know, it, it's the way the world is. You know, they have Black Friday. Anybody did some Black Friday shopping? I was at Walmart. It was packed. Unbelievable. So, um, Black Friday, and then what's... Is there like, I, I, can't, I think that holds over to Saturday. Then there's Cyber Monday, you know. So this is Sensational Sunday. So we'll get, we'll get, we'll get that. No, we, we, we don't do any real, really kind of gimmick to do stuff. We're just going to give. and we'll Honor the Lord with the first fruits that belong to him. There's no special uh, napkin I'm going to anoint or a special cup that heals your family and it's just Jesus, man. Just Jesus. Just put Jesus first. Walk with him. Do what you can. If you're not a tither, I'm not I'm asking you to tithe. A tithe is a tenth. If, uh, the first tenth belongs to the Lord. And I just believe, and I've seen this experience in my life, that when I began, and I started to tithe, the, the remainder that was still in my hand was significantly more effective and, and prosperous than the, than the 10 with the 10% that I gave away. And I didn't know anything about tithing. And I was an athlete, and I heard about it at church for the first time. I grew in a Catholic church. They didn't talk about tithing. They talked about giving. So I gave. Not a lot, but I did give. Um, when I learned about tithing for the first time, it did change my life. I started tithing. And I, at first, I didn't want to tithe because a tenth was a lot of money for me. 
uh, based on what I was, the amount of income I was generating. But I just said, I, it was just money. I love God. So I'm going to do that. So I started tithing. And God started responding to me in a different way. He was already responding to me. But he started responding to me differently. Uh, I don't think he, he cared about the money. He didn't need it, didn't use it. It's not any good where he is. But he cared about my, my willingness to give it. Amen. And it elevated me. If you're not tithing at this point in time in your life, I'm not telling you to start tithing. You can't do that yet. Just start giving. Just start giving. Um, to take a tenth of your income and give it to the Lord is quite a bit. It's a significant part. Even if, it's, even if you're only making $10 to give a dollar, you've probably got earmarks for that whole 10 bucks because you ain't making a lot. But you start the process of giving. And as you're giving, God will walk with you till you become into a life habit now where you can tie. And then God will, will do what only he can do. Makes a way when there's no way. Um, if you stood earlier to get a house and you're not tithing, that's okay. Because we're not on your faith or your traction in the heavens. We're on mine and on the traction that's in this house. And you're a part of it. So if it's raining outside right now, storm, you're not getting wet because of the structure that you're under protects you. So that's what this structure does for you spiritually. So that's good news. You know, just embrace that, but do what you can. Just do what you can, and God will do the rest of it. Father, in the name of Jesus, as our ushers come to serve us, we'll do what we can, and we know how faithful you are to do what you must. In every way, for everybody, I ask that your blessing would be bountiful. Mess us up this season with such a unique and special blessing like never before, and let healing come and restore us according to your own desire. In Jesus' name. Amen.